Okay, so we saw that uh, HTTP is a stateless protocol, which means that data sent through one uh, URL request will not be there for another request unless we do something about it. So uh, a request object is not good enough when it comes to persisting data across URL accesses. So uh, in order to make our servlet remember our uh, data, what we need to do is we need to use a different object. And the use case for this is, of course, logging screens, shopping carts, any, any other use case where you would want to have uh, a memory of the data that's been submitted by the user already. So in order to have that kind of a feature, we use HTTP session. So we had a small example where we used a session object to retrieve and store a username value so that uh, we just pick the first value from the request and then save it in the session so that uh, further requests, even if they do not have the username, we can pull it up from the session object. So this is a simple uh, overview of how we can use request objects and session objects to uh, persist data user input across different uh, accesses. A session object is created per user or uh, machine. Again, we will elaborate this in a bit more detail shortly. This is at a very high level. We need to understand that uh, for every user accessing the application on a browser, there will be one session object that's created and provided to us by Tomcat. So objects are available across requests by using the session object so that you can persist data across different requests. Of course, for that same user and machine. So this is perfect for using, uh, you know, for use for our previous uh, use cases that I mentioned before. Login sessions can have the user ID in the session and then shopping carts can have the whole shopping cart object itself in the session. And uh, we can pull up the session object by using the request object. So you just have to do a request start, get session, and then you'd get an object. Uh, you put that as a HTTP session object, and then uh, you're good to go. But now, what if we want more than this? What if we want an object that can be persisted across different users, or probably even different uh, browsers? Uh, let me show you how that works. Say. Um, I have this servlet that I created earlier. Now I have a, I have a session which has a, you know a value that I've entered here. Let me enter the value again. So I'll say name equals test. Okay, so now I have a session and uh, the name value of that session, uh, I'll just show this here. See, we have a saved username. Um, property and then inside that you know map to this particular string we have this username string so this test value has been stored in the session but then as i told you it's only for a particular user and a particular browser now if somebody else uses this application the session value will be blank for them because a new session is created it can be as simple as a different browser itself so let me just take this url and uh, open a browser different from what we have used before. And say I do not pass this parameter. Now what will the session object contain? The session object will be null. Now if I do not pass a parameter here, we can still see that the session object here is still test. Test is associated with the session that's mapped to this particular tab alone. It's not just the user, it's also the browser. So this is a tab inside Eclipse which acting as a browser. So for this Eclipse browser alone, we have the test string map to the session. But when I'm using this browser, since I have not added this value, I haven't passed this to the request yet, since it's a new session, the session will not have any values. Now, what if I want to have a value that, you know, that is there and accessible across different users? Say some other user tries to access the servlet, now I want this to be available for that user also. So in order to do that, we need to use something other than a session object. So we need it to be accessible across the entire application. We need it to be shared across different servlets and different uh, users. So again, it's not just one servlet. 
it should be accessible across different servlets. A session object will be accessible across different servlets, servlets but not for different users. So we need this to be accessible across both servlets and different users. A use case for this would be some initialization code that you would want to put. So uh, let's say I have a database application and uh, I do not want to open a database connection for every access. I want to use, uh, you know, I want to have a database connection open and available across servlets and across users. And that database connection is used by all servlets to connect to the database. Uh, another common example is a common uh, bulletin board where you would want to put, I mean, the use case for that for this differs depending on the business. But then if you want to have a common place where a data can be accessed by all users, then you would want to use something else. And that is the context object. So a context object is, again, Tomcat implemented. We get the object and the object is provided by Tomcat for us. And uh, there are two ways in which we get the context object. Uh, one of the ways require a little bit more knowledge into something else. So I'm going to keep that on hold for now. And I'll show you another way to access this context object, which is the second way. So um, the second way is very similar to what we have used for uh, a session object, just like we have done a request.get session of a session object. The same way we can get the context object also from this request object. So let's do that here. request dot get servlet context. So the response type is servlet context. So I'll have to declare a variable of servlet context. Okay. Um, I'll have to import servlet context here. So Adding values to the context is again similar to adding values to the session. So um, I will have the same logic flow here. If the username is not blank, then I'll, along with adding it to the session, I'll add it to the context also. Even context has a set attribute method. So I will use the same set here. So I will have a saved username attribute in the context as well. And I will save this username string inside the context as well with under the same saved username attribute. So let me print this out as well. So I'll say writer.print, let me just copy this. So I can say the, the context parameter has the username as, again, this will be context. So the signature is the same when it comes to session and context, but the way they behave is, is different. So when the session object has only data for that particular user alone and that particular browser alone, a context parameter has value for across the application for different uh, users. So there's only one context per web application, but there are different session and there'll be one session parameter per user and per browser. So uh, I can save this. And again, we need to test this out with two different browsers to simulate two different users accessing this application. So I'll first use this. So I haven't entered any user value here. So the request session and context are all blank. Now let me try this on a different browser as well. So, um, so we'll see this as two different users. Now in both these, for both these users, all the three are blank. Now let me pass a value here. User one has been passed and uh, it goes into the request object, goes into the session object, and goes into the context object. Now, if I access over here, now if I access the same thing here, I'm not gonna pass a value. 
So the request object is obviously null. The session object should still be null because this is a different session because we have a different browser here. But what about the context object? I told you the context object is consistent across the application. So there is only one context ob object across the application. So this context, context object should have the value that I have passed in this access. So let's try accessing this again. So you can see the request object is null. Session object has the value null and context object has the value user one. Uh, of course, when I say request object is null, I'm not saying that uh, the whole object itself is null, but the username attribute of the request object is null. So just want to clarify that. So same thing for the session also. The username attribute of the session object is null, but the context object remains. Say here, I remove this value. Now, this particular session for this browser tab has the session value set and the context value set. So now if I access this only, the request parameter should be null. So let's test that. Yes, that request parameter is null. The session parameter will be there because we passed this value in a previous session and the context parameter, of course, goes without saying. It's same across the application, so this will still continue to be user one. 